Hi, today we are going to continue our discussion on number systems. Last time we left off on the conclusion that on dividing one natural number by another natural number, that is on the decimal expansion of a rational number, you either get a number, a decimal number, which has a terminating sequence, that is say in the cases of 10 by 5, which is equal to 2.0. The remainder vanishes and the number is what you call a terminating sequence, that is 2.0. But we also looked at cases like 1 by 7 in which the number is non-terminating but repeating. That is because the remainder never goes to 0. And so therefore the decimal representation of 1 by 7 is given by a non-terminating repeating sequence. That is 0.142857, which keeps repeating. That is 142857, and so on. Now, there is a shorthand for representation of repeating non-terminating non sequences. That is, if we, if we wish to write... Point, uh, 1 by 7, we could write this as point 1,4,2,8,5,7 with a bar over this block. The bar is used to represent the rep uh, repeating block. We could also have a decimal representation in which only some part of the representation is repeating. That is, you could have 2.2 5, 3, 5, 3, 5, 3. So now the representation of this number would be given by 0.253 to the bar over 53 only because this is the repeating block. Now we will look at conversion of this representation to a representation which is of the form P by Q. Let's take up the case of this number itself. Say we want to convert 0.253 bar into the form P by Q where Q not equal to 0. Hence we would also be proving that a repeating non-terminating sequence of numbers is actually a rational number. So here goes. Say we call x equal to 0.253 bar. Then we consider x which is equal to, sorry, 10x which is equal to 2.53 bar. And let's look at 1000x which would be equal to 253.53 bar. Sorry, 1000x. Right? x equal to 0.253 bar. Therefore, 10x is equal to 2.53 bar. Therefore, 1000x is equal to 253.53 bar. So let's subtract this. Subtract this from this. So you get 1000 minus 10 into x which is equal to 253.53 bar minus 2.53 bar which gives us 251.00 which is equal to 990x so this implies x is equal to 251 by 990. Now considering that x was equal to this number, that is 0.253 bar, an alternative representation of this number would be 251 by 990. And so therefore we have represented this number in the form p by q and also in that process prove that a 
repeating non terminating sequence of, of decimal representation is actually a rational number. We will take a one more case just to get familiarized with this notation. So say we want to find out the P by Q representation of 1.25 bar. Right? So we take X is equal to 1.25 bar. 100x is equal to 125.25 bar. So therefore, 100 minus 1 x is equal to 125.25 minus 125.25 bar. That is minus 1.25 bar, which is equal to 124. Therefore, x is equal to 124 by 99. You realize that a good strategy while going about this would be to isolate the repeating block uh, after the decimal point. So that is you have 0.25 bar here and 0.25 bar here. So that they cancel out when you subtract these two numbers. So that you can find the UIT value of x easily. Next, let's look at the representation of rational numbers on the number line using successive magnification. So let's consider a number like 5.7, right? So first we look at the number line itself and this being 0, this is 5. And this is 6. Obviously, this is not to scale, but this is just to show. Now, we know that this being 5.723, this would definitely be greater than 5, but less than 6. So, let's look at the region between 5 and 6 closely. So, you have 5 here, and you have 6 here. Then you have 5.1, 5.2, 5.3. 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, and 5.9. 5.1, So now this is 5.723, and so therefore this is definitely larger than 5.7, but less than 5.8. So we will look at the region between. 5.7 and 5.8 in greater detail. So you have 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75. 5.7, and 5.75. Then you have 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, and so finally 5.8. So now this is 5.723 and so therefore this will definitely be larger than 5.72 but less than 5.73 and so therefore it will lie in this region that is between 5.72 and 5.73 so we'll draw that out and you say this is 5.72 and this is 5.73. So this will be 5.721, 5.722, Likewise. And so therefore you need to find 5.723. And so we go 5.72. 0, 5.721, 5.722, This is precisely the point that we want, that is 5.723. And so you see how with successive magnification you can locate a number. This holds true for any number, that is say if you want to find 0.25 bar up to say four places of decimal. You could always do that because up to four places of decimal this is nothing but 0.2525. Right. 
and so therefore you could use a similar technique to arrive at the point where this point is represented on the number line. Next up, we will look at the construction of length root over x. This is a very basic construction which starts off with constructing a line segment of length x that is AB extending B by 1 units to C and then finding out the midpoint of AC and calling that point O and with OA or OC as radius draw a semicircle and then extend B upwards to intersect the semicircle at B. Now length BD is equal to root over x. The proof of this is rather simple and can be done using Pythagoras theorem. It is being left out as an exercise. Some other things that need to be kept in mind are that the combination of the set of rational numbers and irrational numbers is what is called a set of real numbers. So the combination of the set of rational numbers and irrational numbers is called a real number. And so, because there is nothing left on the number line if you take out all the rational numbers and irrational numbers, the number line itself is sometimes referred to as the real number line. Now some comments about operations, of, operations on real numbers. The sum of two rational numbers will always be a rational number. That is say 3 plus 5 is equal to 8 or 1 by 2 plus 3 is equal to 7 by 2 etc. Another thing to be kept in mind is that the sum of two irrational numbers may be irrational or rational. It depends on the numbers itself. For example, root 3 plus root 2 will be irrational, which will approximately be given by 1.732 and 1 plus 1.414. But both these series are non-terminating, non-repeating, and so therefore the sum itself will be non-repeating, non-terminating. So therefore root 3 plus root 2 will be uh, irrational number. But consider the sum of root 3 and minus root 3. Root 3 plus minus root 3. Now both these individually are irrational numbers but the sum of these two is 0 which is a rational number. Right. And so therefore uh, another rule of thumb that needs to be kept in mind is that the sum of an irrational number and a rational number is always irrational, which is let's say 3 plus root 2 root 3 is equal to 3 plus 1.732. So therefore, the sum of an irrational number and a rational number is always an irrational number. So that is as far as the operations on real numbers is concerned goes. There is an important operation which is used to simplify calculations which is called rationalizing the denominator. It is done like this. Say you have a number which is of the form say 2 upon 2 minus root 3. The concept of rationalizing the denominator is to basically convert the denominator into a rational number by some operation. And the easiest way to do that would be to multiply and divide the number by 2 plus root 3 and by this identity that is a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square. You have 2 into 2 minus, sorry, 2 plus root 3 upon 2 square minus 
root 3 whole square and so therefore you get 2 into 2 plus root 3 upon 4 minus 3 which is 4 plus 2 root 3 and so therefore rationalizing the denominator is a, is a way to simplify calculations uh, that is say you can avoid dividing by irrational numbers etc so rationalizing the denominator is an important concept apart from that uh, a quick reminder of uh, the rules of exponentials that is a to the power m into a to the power n is equal to a to the power m plus n then you have a to the power m to the power n is equal to a to the power m into n and a to the power m upon a to the power n is equal to a to the power m minus n and you have a to the power m into b to the power m is equal to a b whole to the power n. Now these are also important uh, identities that need to be kept in mind. So this is all for now.